Papa I have run through a troop and by my God have I lit over a world. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in Him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is the rock save our God? It is God that guided me with strength and make it my way perfect. He make it my feet like hind feet and set me upon my high places. 34. He teached my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my hands. Verse 29 and 34. For by thee I have run through a troop and by my God have I leaped over the wall. He teached my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my hands. Positions. He said, By thee, 
I have belonged in there. <laughs> Next. And, and by, by my God. God. By my God. Have I lived over my war? Have I lived over my war? Meaning, even if the fence or the walls are too heavy for you to cross, it says, by my God, I will live over that wall. Is your mouth sleeping? I don't know why somebody is just looking at me like that. Eh? Don't let, let your mind, mouth sleep. Walls that are heavy, heavily tested walls. Garrisons. It says, by thee, I will move over them. Amen. By thee, I have run through a troop. And, and by, by my God, God have I lit over the world. Not, Not by, by any other person. person. That's, That's why, why you have to understand, understand the strategy of, of this battle. battle. Read verse 30. As, as for God, God as, as for God, God His way is perfect. perfect. His way is perfect. perfect. The word of the Lord is the word tried. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler. He is a buckler to all those that trust in Him. All those who trust Him. Go on, go on. Go on. For, For who is, is God? Said the Lord. For who is God? Said the Lord. For who is a rock? Who is a rock? Save our God. Save our God. It, it is God that guided me with strength. It is God that, that guided me with strength. And, and make it my way perfect. And make it my way perfect. Make it my, make it my feet like high. When it comes to the matter of your journey in life, it's not a man and not the determinants. Men, Men are not, not the determinant. Not, not even your boss in your office. Not even, not even your boss. He, he makes, makes my way perfect. perfect. Not you make, make my way perfect. perfect. He does, does it. He says, he says I'm, I'm guided with strength by my, my God. God. I'm able to leap over a wall by my God. I run through a troop by my God. Really? He maketh my feet like hinds feet. He makes my feet like hinds feet. And setteth me upon my high and places. And set me upon my high places. Can I ask you a question? Who will set you upon your high places? Who will guard you with strength? Who will make you to run over the troops? If all, all are compassing in the secret of in a, in a, in the in the secret of fight, fighting or battles, you do not understand that the factor that matters is God. Eh? I'm telling you, you will lose every battle you ever face. You will lose every battle you ever face. You will, if you have never understood that the factor that matters is God, I'm telling you, you will lose. It is important that you understand that if you want to have speed, it is God. You want to leap over troops, it is God. You want to, you want to, you want to. Uh, you want to overtake whatever, it is God. You want victory in your office, it is God. Victory in your marriage, it is God. It is God. Then verse 34. He teached my hands to war. He teached my hands to war. So that a bow of steel, so that a bow of steel is broken by my hand. Is broken by my hands. It's not ordinary bow, but a bow of steel. Can I talk to you? If you are fighting with beasts, you don't need human strength. If you are fighting with beasts, you don't need human strength. You need the strength that is more than a beast. To fight a beast. Hence, man will have been able to defeat Satan by natural strength. When you understand that when you are running with horses, the strength and the speed you need now has to come from a 
from from another object or another being whose speed is more than that of a horse then you will learn to trust the lord how many of you can run with barefoot with chariot of horses and you will overtake except god grant you strength and speed like he gave elijah you might not be able to overtake And the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he outran King Ahab who was on a chariot of horses. That one is divinity strength. If you are fighting men who are heavily defended and heavily tested with weapons of, of, of the kingdom of darkness, you need something bigger than that to confront them. When David was fighting Goliath, Goliath came with a whole lot of hammers, weapons. He came heavily dressed. Even the sheet bearer was in front. Sheet bearers used to be in front. Sheet bearers used to be in front. He had a sheet bearer that was in front already defending Goliath. And Goliath himself was heavily dressed. Do you understand what I'm saying? This guy was heavily dressed with weapons. There is a shield for the chest. There is another, some of you have ever watched Roman army war before or fight or warriors in movies. You realize they have helmet. Even the Bible talks about helmet of salvation. Have you ever not read it? Just like a soldier. Helmet. There was an helmet on Goliath's head. There is a, there is a blessed plate that was a shield. The question is this. How was a stone able to penetrate through elements? That's a question you should ask. Then you will know that the stones that David picked were not natural stones. A Roman army or officer would dress with helmet, with breastplate. They have all of these. Yes. That is how they dress. Not like your soldiers. Go and watch and find out what I'm saying. You realize that Roman army officers they dress with element the bible talks about element of salvation there's an element that is meant for war there is a best play that is meant for defense question how were those stones able to penetrate particularly the one that david launched towards the forehead of goliath and it went through that tells you that the weapon of the stone that david was holding was not a physical weapon and he picked five. The second question. How was the sheep bearer able to avoid the stone? You don't know that there are a lot of miracles in that scripture. And he went straight. Left. Avoided the armor bearer. And went straight. And hit the forehead. And penetrated through helmets. The weapons you use for warfare will be empty if all you are doing is making noise. Take note of what I said. If all you are doing is making noise and not releasing tangible sound. When Goliath was talking, he talked. But when David was talking, he sounded something that has to do with covenants. The stones that David used, they were stones that have to do with altars. Each of the stones represented a generation. Each of those stones represented one covenant for the house of Israel. And he picked five of the stones. Five stones. Five. Only launched one covenant. And then he went through every defense that the enemy had and brought the enemy down. Can you lift up your hands? I want you to release a sound. Say, in the name of Jesus. By the covenant of victory and freedom in this kingdom, I release judgments into the camps of my enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One stone 
The sheep bearer like, could not stop just ordinary one stone. Do you know why? It was because the stone represented an altar in a covenant. He picked five. Don't just read your Bible and just read it like you are just reading newspaper. There are histories within what happened to David. The stones were symbols of something kept with. Oh, listen to me. Even for the stones to be in a sling bag, I want you to understand that it is an act of prophets. It is an act of prophet. I'm not talking about Tumim. You understand what I'm saying? But when you see Tumim, you understand. When you hear about Torah, you will understand why even the stones are to be in a sling bag. It's an act. The stones were not ordinary stones. Why stone, for God's sake? When you are dealing with covenant people, be careful. Be careful. So when, they, when Goliath began to talk and rant, David said, who is this? Oh, please, mark what David said. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Why uncircumcised? Because David understood that through circumcision, Israel has victory. And there is something that follows circumcision. Stones of altar. I don't know whether these people understand what I'm saying here. Altars were back in circumcision. Joshua, the same thing. They picked the stone when they crossed Jordan. And the Bible says in Joshua chapter 5, if you read from verse 3 to 4, but this is the cause why, they, why Joshua circumcised the people. For the Lord said to him, all the other men of what they have died, circumcise this new generation. Meaning, there is a stone of covenant attached to circumcision. Hear me, Goliath had no circumcision of covenant. So what David could use to destroy him is a stone of circumcision. It's a stone of circumcision, which is a sign of covenant. How do you come when they even gave him weapons? They gave him everything and they said, oh, take this weapon. So I said, take. He said, no, 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 I will use my weapon. I will use my weapon. I might not know how to shout too much. I might not know how to make noise. But there is something I know. There is one thing I know. It is called covenant of circumcision. Strong covenant. The Bible says, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. We have no confidence in the flesh. Why circumcision? Look at the language that David brought. He said, we are circumcised. You, you are not circumcised. And you threaten the God of our circumcision? That was the battle. It is against circumcision. Why do you think David will have approached Goliath and said to him, who is this uncircumcised? Meaning as far as the heaven and the earth is concerned, Goliath was never recognized. There was no identity with Goliath. And he came with one of the stones of circumcision, representing the altars. I told you, I said, those five stones represented altars, backing circumcision. There were five. Count the men that God had ever had covenant with. The men that have ever walked the platform of the earth, genuinely, you realize that Particularly the ones God dealt with at that period. Some of them, whether they are major or minor, they were five. So David was not fighting like a useless person. He was not making noise everywhere. He was not busy doing, saying unnecessary things. When you understand the covenant back in your life, you will stop worrying about those useless enemies in your offices. You stop worrying yourself. There is a stone backing you, people of God. There is a stone. The blood of Isaac was shed there in the realm of the spirit. The blood of the ram that was caught in the ticket representing Isaac was poured on that stone. And maximally, Jesus' blood shed on the same altar of circumcision. Why have men lost battles? Why are men committed suicide? Why are men lost a lot of... You know why? Because they don't understand the covenant back in them. 
Jones. David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And you are coming with stone. The stone was not meant for the armor bearer. The stone is meant for the Goliath. Because it is not because of these little demons that the covenant was made. It's against the big guy, the devil himself. So we don't leave the major and fight minor. He didn't even bother about the armor bearer. All that he was concerned about is that Goliath that was speaking rubbish against the name of God. When you are dealing with, I, I know a lot of people are dealing with allergies, some brokers in your offices that are doing a lot of demonic fetish things. And ah, where should I run to? Hey, relax. Relax. Understand that there is a covenant position that is meant to deal with those enemies. Just pick one stone out of those covenants and the enemies will be down. Just one stone. When the rest of the, the, the giant realized that Goliath was down, they began to run. And David went ahead and killed all of them. David says, It is the law that makes my feet like the iron's feet. It caused me to run through a troop. We saw it here. And I leaped over the wall, it teaches my hands to war. So you understand how David was able to pull down Goliath now? You see? How he was able to pull down Goliath because it is the Lord that was teaching by his hands. If not, if it was not the Lord, he would have missed Goliath and hit the armor bearer. Understand the strategy of the battle in this kingdom. It's not in noise making. It's not in noise making. It is now for 40 days. Goliath was shouting. Was shouting. Who is able to come and fight? 40 days he was making noise. I will kill everybody. Goliath didn't do nothing. Check first Samuel 17. You will see there from verse 40 there about. He did it for 40 days. He was shouting. I will kill you. I will do this. Oh, David just came nearby. And just was saying, Who is that guy? He said, Come, talk to the king. I was behind at the desert taking care of my father's sheep. Lion came, I tore it. Bear came, I tore it. Forty good days, Goliath didn't kill anybody. Noise, noise making. And one guy just came within a few seconds and picked a stone. That is all that is needed. A stone of covenant. So meaning when you want to fight battles, even in the place of prayer, you have to be pressing a button of covenants. Not just saying words. You have to ensure that the words you are releasing, they have a stone. They are actually linked to a stone in the covenant. Yes. Let them be linked to a stone. The Bible says all of us are lively stones. All of us. That's First Peter chapter 2 from verse 6. All of us are lively stones. I built up a spiritual house. So when you are fighting battles, understand the direction from where you are fighting from. Don't just issue out words. Let, let's read. Let's read. Ye also are lively stones. Yes. Are built up a spiritual house, a spiritual house, and holy priesthood, holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual to sacrifices, offer up spiritual sacrifice, acceptable spiritual. To God by Jesus Why do they say you are a stone? Why? Why? Why did they say you are a stone? 
you symbolize covenant. Read verse 9 of that scripture. It says, Ye are a chosen generation, chosen generation, a royal priest. You see, you see the kind of stone you are chosen stones. Stop being afraid. Many of you are afraid of too many things. Afraid of one guy that went to one place. We're afraid of one broker that did one. Leave all these ones. Face. Listen to me. There is a sign of circumcision on you. Are you hearing me? That sign of circumcision is a sign that Christ placed by himself. So worry not. Don't worry. A chosen stone, chosen generation, royal stone. That is who you are. Royal stone, chosen stones. David never made noise. Ah. No, 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 no. Goliath had been shouting for 40 days. So when you are fighting, understand the direction from where you are fighting from. And he knew he was. But David said, I am just a small boy, but I understand circumcision. Do you have the mark of circumcision on you? If you do, then you can post before Goliath. You can't do me nothing. Are you still hearing me, somebody? First of all, David said, who is this uncircumcised? Meaning, I am circumcised. Because if you are not circumcised, you will not call somebody uncircumcised. And because of circumcision, the warrior men of Joshua, they did not die. They didn't die. Some other died. But these ones were circumcised so that they will not die. And the immortal took the battle from their hands. At the gate of Jericho, at the gate of Jericho, the commander-in-chief of God's army was already waiting after they undergo circumcision. And then, no night. The same thing with that of David. Because we saw it with Joshua. Joshua barely circumcised him. And then the, the commander was already waiting for him. David boasted on circumcision before Goliath. And right at that spot, he was able. I, I, I keep asking myself, how was David able to, to launch that stone that the armor bearer of Goliath could not defend the stone? Even Goliath's helmet could not stop the storm from penetrating. And it went through. Went through. And it went down. I ask you one question. What is the length of that stone that was able to enter into the first core of a man? And you know that that stone was not an ordinary stone. It was not an ordinary stone. And you knew that God was interested in something. This morning, we are talking about spiritual sounds and warfare. What sound are you making before the enemies? What are you saying? What are you saying? The enemy is saying you will go down. You, what are you saying? Paul charged Timothy. He said, what a good warfare. What a good warfare with the prophecies that have been spoken to you. How do you war a good warfare outside prophecy? It's not possible. A good warfare becomes good when prophecy is attached. Don't fight like somebody that is beating the hair. There is nothing to worry about. You have nothing to lose. You have so much to gain. Are you still hearing me, somebody? This is the reason why you have to wake up and look beyond now. Look beyond now. What a good warfare with the prophecies that have been spoken unto you. First Timothy 1 18. What a good warfare. David said, It is the law that teaches my hand to war. 
It is the Lord that will teach you how to run over the troops. It is the Lord that will teach you how to overcome those that want to kill you. Do you know something? If it is man that gives you life, they will have taken it from you. The Bible says, Cause is any man that puts his trust in man. When man gives you anything, they will come back and abuse you the way they give to you. Put your trust in the Lord. See what David said? He said, My trust is in the Lord. Are you hearing me, somebody? Some of you, some of you are here. What is happening to you right now? You just need a little, a little tweak of your trust level on God. Then you will see the miracles, the wonders, the great things that the Lord will do for you. David did not say, it is my, it is, uh, it is my commander-in-chief that teaches my hand to walk. No, he said, the Lord teaches my hand to walk. Who is the rock? Said our God. Are you hearing me, somebody here? You know why I'm talking to you like this? I want you to look at warfare from another direction. Some of you have read First Samuel 7. You've read it. You are like, oh, what is happening? David just challenged Goliath. No, it, they were not empty words. They were not empty words. They were words that were founded on the stone of covenant. Are you see here somebody? Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, today, today, you will overcome. As you launch those stones, the stones will appear in the camp of your enemies. And it will never return back void. It will hit the targets. I really wish that some of you will come up and grow by virtue of what we are saying here. So that you understand that the battle between Goliath and David is not a mere battle. It's a battle of covenant. It is the law that teaches my hand to walk. Let's check why is it that many of you have been praying and it's like you don't know, you are not receiving. You have, been, you have just been acting like Goliath. You too, you have been making noise. Tell your neighbor, stop making noise. Make covenant. Stop making noise. 